Hey everybody, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about experiment number three for Chem 1141 um, and show you a little video that shows basically some of the things that you're going to be working with in the lab. Um, but first I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the concept behind what we're doing and you know the purpose for this. So what I'd like to say is that in this, in your Chem 1341 lecture class, one of the things that you've talked about are physical properties and chemical properties. And whenever you've talked about those things, um, you've talked about physical changes, chemical changes, and you have probably also talked about separations. So separations, there we go separating things based on their physical or chemical properties. Well, in this lab, we're going to be exploring that. You are going to be given a mixture of CaCO3 calcium carbonate, um, that mixture will also have some SiO2 silicon dioxide, And then finally, what you're going to have in there are small uh, pieces of metal or pieces of iron. So these small pieces of iron, um, all of these different substances are unique. Um, iron, for instance, is a metal and you'll find that on the periodic table within the transition metals. Silicon dioxide, well, that is a compound. This is a molecular compound. And finally, calcium carbonate is an ionic compound. And what that means is that this ionic compound will basically break down into its, its ions, Ca2 plus and the polyatomic ion, CO3 2 minus or carbonate. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is exploiting these differences between all of these substances in order to separate them out. So you're going to be given a fairly homogeneous mixture of these three different things, and you're going to have to separate them based on their physical and chemical properties. Now, the first thing that you're going to use is a magnet. So that magnet is going to bind or is going to basically control the movement of iron. Meanwhile, that magnet will have no effect on CaCO3 and SiO2. So think about it like this. This is a beaker that is going to have your mixture. And I'm going to use, um, let's use red dots to indicate our iron. And then I'll go with a purple to indicate my silicon dioxide. It really doesn't matter that much. And then green to indicate my calcium carbonate. Okay, so we've got this mixture in here. And what you're going to do is very first, you're going to move your magnet to the bottom side of this beaker. What will that do? That will cause all of the iron to basically sink to the bottom very quickly. Now, that magnet is going to be on the exterior of your beaker. Here's our magnet. And it's going to hold those pieces of iron in place. And so what you're going to be able to do is pour off into another beaker. You're going to be able to pour off the calcium carbonate indicated here and the silicon dioxide indicated here. Now you're going to pour this into a specific piece of glassware known as an evaporating dish, evaporating dish. What remains in your first beaker, however, is pretty significant. What remains in there are the pieces of iron because those pieces of iron, well, because of the magnet, they were basically brought to the bottom of the beaker. Okay, so that's one separation. You're, you're separating the iron from the silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate based on the physical property that iron is going to be attracted to, or iron is magnetic. Meanwhile, the two other components, silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate, well, what you're going to do to that is you're going to add five molar HCl. Now, at this point in time, you probably haven't gotten to molarity, 
but that has to do with the concentration. How many molecules of HCl are there per unit volume? And per unit volume in this case would be liters. So you're going to add HCl to this mixture. So HCl is going to be a liquid. And what is going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is that calcium carbonate is going to become solubilized and it's going to break down. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have the same beaker that has your um, silicon dioxide, the solid, but the ions, the calcium carbonate ions, will basically be this solution. However, this carbonate ion, what's going to happen to it is it's going to break down into CO2. So you're going to form bubbles of CO2 um, whenever you add this HCl. So the calcium ions are going to be floating around in that solution. The silicon dioxide is going to be at the bottom of your solution, or at the bottom of your beaker, meaning, or I'm sorry, not at the bottom of your beaker, at the bottom of your evaporating dish, meaning what you can do is transfer this liquid, which has your calcium ions, into another solution, into another beaker. This beaker now just has a bunch of calcium ions present in it. So you have free calcium ions floating around in the solution. Now what you can do with that is, or what you're going to do with this, is you're going to add another solution. And that solution is K2CO3. This is a soluble solution. What you'll notice about it is, well, it, there is no solid in it. There's no uh, precipitate or anything like that. And what that means is this is an AQ or an aqueous solution. So those, this has a bunch of ions of potassium and carbonate floating around. Well, whenever you add this to a solution containing calcium, what's going to happen is these carbonate ions are going to come in contact with the calcium ions. And what we do know already is that calcium carbonate, I'm sorry, calcium carbonate is an insoluble ionic compound. So what we're going to do is we're going to form this solid in here. And that solid is CaCO3. What you're going to be doing is all of these steps. What we want to do is get this separation and determine how much we recover of each thing. We want to determine the composition of this mixture. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to get the mass at the very beginning of the lab. What is the mass of your unknown? Then go through each one of these steps. And whenever you go through each one of these steps, what is the mass of each subsequent uh, component? So what's the mass of the iron by itself? Then dry up the silicon dioxide. You'll put that in the oven, in the evaporating dish, and let it sit for at least 15 to 20 minutes. What is the mass of just that silicon dioxide? Then finally, what you're going to do is you're going to have the solution with the calcium carbonate, the solid calcium carbonate. You're going to do some gravity filtration to collect that calcium carbonate, collect that on a, a, uh, collect that on a piece of filter paper, what mass remains, or what mass of that calcium carbonate is present, dry that out also in the oven so that you know what is the mass of the calcium carbonate, what is the mass of the iron, and what is the mass of the silicon dioxide. So then you can figure out what is the percent composition of your overall mixture. All right, well, keep watching. There's some kind of demos of the materials that you're going to be working with in lab. Be careful with this lab. We are, of course, working with a strong acid, and that acid is HCl. So be careful not to spill that or anything like that. Um, wear gloves, wear goggles, be in proper dress, t dress code the entire time that lab is going on. Um, other than that, just keep watching. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Just a reminder for everyone, I know that we're well into the semester now, but if you look at my attire, I am an appropriate lab attire. I've got blue jeans on, I've got Jordans on, got a shirt that goes all the way down to my sleeves, and most importantly, my ankles are covered. I pull my pants up a little bit, my socks are long enough to cover my ankles completely. So I'm in lab appropriate attire, make sure that you are as well. Oh yeah, and goggles, one of the most important things. I have a pair of goggles that I feel comfortable wearing for three hours or longer. So if you have goggles that you have to take off every 15 minutes because they keep fogging up or if they're uncomfortable, you need to get a new pair of goggles. These cost me five bucks or six bucks or something. 
make sure that you have a pair of goggles that you're comfortable wearing because if you start taking them off over and over again, eventually you're going to take them off and forget them. And then you're going to be removed from lab or something could happen where an acid splashes up in your face and gets in your eye. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Hey, it's me, Dr. Gray. I want to talk to you about next week's lab. First of all, I want to talk to you about the contents of your bin. In your bin, you're going to find a number of different things. The first might seem a little bit odd. It is a magnet. The second is a 50 milliliter glass beaker, a 100 milliliter glass beaker, a 50 milliliter plastic beaker, a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, a watch glass, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, a funnel, and this ceramic piece of glassware which is known as an evaporating dish. This is everything that you're going to need for next week's lab. What you are doing in this lab this upcoming week is a separation. You're separating based on chemical and physical properties. You are looking at a mixture that looks like this. Now on initial inspection, you might think, oh, well, that just looks like a bunch of baking soda or something of that nature. But there are totally three different things in here. First and foremost, there is uh, calcium carbonate. That is chalk. There are um, metal beads or iron beads. And finally, there is silicon dioxide, which is sand. What you're going to do is you're going to have to separate these three things using all of this different glassware. The first thing that you're going to be able to do is collect a small amount of this sample and use your magnet. That magnet on the base of your uh, plastic beaker that has your sample, well, what's going to adhere to the base? Your iron shot, your metal that is in this mixture. Once you've done that, of the three different things in there, you've gotten rid of one of them. Next up, you have calcium carbonate. Well, calcium carbonate is an insoluble ionic compound. That insoluble ionic compound, well, if you add water to it, it's not going to solubilize. However, if you add an acid to it, what happens is the calcium ions and the carbonate ions separate from one another, and that carbonate ion decomposes to produce carbon dioxide. So you will solubilize, by the addition of acid, you will solubilize that calcium carbonate leaving behind calcium ions and carbonate ions. Now, that leaves the last thing completely insoluble, and that is sand. We're not gonna to try to uh, separate the sand by solubilizing it or anything. Instead, whenever you put the mixture of your calcium carbonate and your sand in here, add acid to it, what's going to happen is you're going to form a clear aqueous layer and an insoluble, uh, yeah, an insoluble layer, and that is your silicon dioxide, your sand. You can decant off. So decanting is a separation technique in which you gradually pour. You can decant off the clear solution. That clear solution has a bunch of calcium ions remaining from your calcium carbonate. When you decant that solution into one of your glass beakers, what you can then do is heat that solution up and add potassium carbonate. Potassium carbonate is an, a soluble ionic compound so you're going to add potassium ions and carbonate ions to the solution that already has calcium ions. So what happens is those calcium ions and those carbonate ions, they're going to come in contact with one another. And when a calcium ion and a carbonate ion come in contact with one another, what do they form? They form a calcium carbonate ionic, or insoluble ionic compound. So you will separate these three components from this mixture, you'll isolate each one of those components and you'll determine, well, of the initial overall mass of the sample that you were working with, what percentage of it is calcium carbonate, what percentage of it is silicon dioxide, and what percentage of it are those small metal beads. After you've done all that, you've done the work through on this, well then, 
you've learned about chemical separations as well as physical separations. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lab. Good luck with everything. Of all the glassware that you're using this week, what you want to make sure to do is that anything that you use, you triple rinse it with this tap water right here, and then you triple rinse it with deionized water. After you triple rinse it with deionized water, get a paper towel, make sure that you dry it out completely. We're working with an acid this week, so you want to make sure that the acid is completely gone before you actually put any of your glassware back into your uh, bin. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Have a good one. At various points in this lab, in experiment number three, you will have to heat samples up. You'll heat samples up on your watch glass and you'll heat the silicon dioxide that remains in your um, evaporating dish. In order to do that, you're going to use this oven right here. This oven is maintained at 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. That's well over 150 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's going to be extremely hot. So anytime that you're opening this and getting anything in or out of it, make sure that you use a heating pad. There are heating pads throughout the lab, just a second. For example, here's a box of heating pads. You can use this to basically grip onto something and bring it out. Likewise, whenever you're bringing something out of this 60 to 80 degree oven, you want to let it cool on top of this heating pad. If you put it directly onto the bench top, the bench top is kind of cool. If you put a hot something onto a cool something, that hot something might crack. So we don't want that to happen. All right, thank you very much for watching. Bye.